Hi there, DW Berman here. I'm just going to show you a few things in the Surface Editor. How to, uh, there's a question on the New Tech Forum about uh, animating an alpha channel. There are a few ways to do it. Uh, this scene, first of all, very simple scene. One object, it's a ball inside of a box. That's, that's the entire object, right? The entire scene. Um, first of all, I'm going to look over here on my Surface Editor panel. I have uh, two objects, uh, I mean actually one object, two surfaces on this object. So I have a box, or a ball surface, which is a ball inside the box, and the box surface itself, and I want to fade out the box over time. So uh, let me go to my transparency channel here, and you see I have this T and the E. The E is for envelope, and that opens our graph editor. Now this is a graph, which uh, you have a value going on the vertical axis, and you have time going along the horizontal. So say at frame 30, I want this to be 100% transparent. I can just click on my little uh, add a key button here, and then click over here in the graph about where I want it. In that case, I actually hit it 100% on frame 30. So now when I scroll my uh, time slider, we see the box disappears mostly disappears. Here's the issue we're, we're dealing with is uh, I'm fading out the uh, surface value but it's still uh, reflecting the light. It's reflecting the specularity so if I want that to go away I have to turn that down to zero. And if you have reflections on your box you're gonna have the same problem. So it's like this is looking more like glass than, uh, than a, a dissolved surface. So <clears throat> There are a number of ways to take care of this. I can uh, copy this layer here, or I just highlight this channel, right click on it, and uh, go to copy. And I can click on the E next to the reflection, and I can paste the value right there. Paste. So now, instead of going from 0% uh, transparent to 0%, I mean to 100% transparent, now it's going from 0% reflective to 100% reflective, and that's exactly the opposite of what we want. We don't want it to become more reflective as it fades out. We want it to become less reflective. So I can right-click and drag around these two keyframes. Right-click, nope. Let me just select those keyframes, go up to the Keys menu, and invert selected keys. Now when I fade it out, over time it fades out. When I drag the time slider, it fades out. I don't want it this reflective though. Let's say I want it uh, to be less reflective. Let me change my tool down here. Just drag this down. Oops, I have both of them selected, so undo. Just the one key. Drag that down. Okay, let's say I want this to start at 20% reflective. So now it's 20% reflective. And okay, that's nice. Have the same problem though. I can copy and paste this to my specular channel. And uh, there we go. Now it fades out completely. Of course, the problem doing it this way is now we have to to go into the three different channels to make changes. Of course, I can just uh, you know add these channels in here, so it's a little easier to to manage. Um, but it, it would be beneficial to only make the change once on the first graph thing here and have it update automatically. And you can do that by you know, selecting the channel you want to follow another one and uh, add modifier, channel follower, double click in here and come find the uh, the initial one which is transparency and you can uh, set the amount of it like that and set the amount of it here although can I do a negative 20 percent to make it 20 percent yeah that, that kinda works and this actually builds on top of the, the value that you already have in here so for this to be exactly what you want you might need to zero out the keys now it looks like I actually need to raise it 100 percent no that's where I want it so I have to start it at 20 and then it'll uh, fade out 20 percent so you, know, you can do that uh, you can also uh, add it through an expression. I just make a new expression uh, and I'll call it trans or, or spec follow trans. 
blah blah blah. That's the name of the expression. Uh, and I can right click. Well, let me just clear out the value. And right click on here. And append to expression. And that gives me this. And I want to say... I'm not sure exactly how to invert it there. I'm not a I'm not a math guy, so that that's kind of a problem for me. So uh, you know, some of us creative types not so good on the math. So how do I reverse that? Not sure. But in the node editor, I can also do do that. I can I can set it up so I'm only changing once. You see, I already have a node here. This is just the uh, DP Kits uh, Edge Shader from Dennis Pantanier. Um, let me disconnect it. It just basically makes the edges rounder so I can actually see the effect of the specular if I wasn't directly facing light with this. Anyway, add a node. I'm going to add a constant. And the constant is going to be a scalar. A scalar is one of these green dots. It's a one number thing. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just this number. If I uh, add a constant uh, vector, you can see it's a blue dot. And if I open this up, you can see I have three values. I have x, y, and z. So the uh, difference between scalar and vector, one is a set of one number, the other is a set of three numbers. Uh, so I can plug the scalar into the transparency, and immediately it does something, because the default value on the scalar is one. So basically I just took took the, uh, the surface out of there completely, except, of course, for the reflection and the specular. I'll show you how to deal with that. But first, let me set up this envelope. I can set an envelope here as well. So uh, let me do the, what I did before, create a keyframe on frame 30, and I want it to be 1. In this case, in the node editor, 1 is 100%, at least in this situation. And 0% is, of course, 0. So there we go. There's basically what we had before. If I slide the time slider over time, you can see it fades out. But of course, the reflections don't. OK, how do I take care of that? Well, first of all, let me just plug this directly into the reflection channel. And you'll notice as I do this, let me slide this over here. I have a reflection setting over here when I let go of this pointer, so I have it plugged into, I have the scalar plugged directly into the reflection. The reflection grays out, so this is no longer active. Basically, whenever you plug something in over here, it goes inactive in the surface editor, with the exception of the bump channel, which actually just kind of adds it to it. Uh, so anyway, I have the scalar here, and we're going to have the same problem I had before. I fade it out over time, but the reflection is still there. Actually, the reflection fades in as the uh, the uh, transparency fades out. So how can I deal with that? Well, up under the node editor, I can go to math, scalar, because these are the scalar uh, math options, and there's an invert. I can invert it. So basically, instead of... Uh, Starting at 0 and fading to 1, I want to start it at 1 and fade it to 0. So let me plug the output of the scalar in there and plug the output of the invert node into the reflection. And there we have it. It fades out. Of course, remember, I wanted it to be 20%, uh, not 100%. So I can get around that. I can make that change by adding another math node. Math isn't always scary. Anyway, math scalar the programmers out there rolling your eyes. Um, scalar multiply. And there are many ways about going about this. This isn't the only way to do this. It's a very flexible system. So basically now I have invert plugged into multiply and my reflection just completely disappeared. Okay, what's going on? Well, let me double click the multiply node. It is zero. Anything times zero equals zero. So that's our problem. If I'd set it to 1, the highest point over here, which is 1 coming out of the scalar, becomes 1 coming out of the multiply node. So it's not doing anything. Remember, I want this to be 20%, so 20% is 0.2. There, now our reflection is 0.2. So it fades from 0.2 to 0. It fades from 20% to 0. Now I can do the exact same thing with the uh, specular. I can plug the output of the invert into there, and now it actually became more specular. This <laughs> The specularity became greater. Let me copy my multiply node. Copy, paste, that's control C, control V on both the Mac and the PC. And uh, let me just change my value. I can use this multiply node to change the value. 
Uh, I don't remember what I had set over here in the surface editor. Uh, it was just 20% as well, so it's the same. I could adjust. If I want the spec and the uh, reflection to be the same uh, value, I can just, you know, use this here. Uh, you can rename these nodes so you can track you know what the heck they were, what you were thinking when you were building this little network. Um, reduce reflection and spec. <laughs> Talking and thinking and typing at the same time. You can also uh, type in down here comments. So, hey, this is a comment. Anyway, and when you click on this node again, you get a little reminder of what your node was. Because, you know, you don't want to write, write out this entire thing because it, it just takes up too much space. So, let me rename it. Hopefully the ampersand won't cause a problem. It still looks too long. Anyway, that's a, a basic, very simple node setup for how to... Uh, animate a uh, you know the same th the animate this over time